One, two, three, into the four. Mr. Piccolotti and Mr. Borgman at the door. Ready to make a podcast, so listen up. Because you know we'll probably mess this up. Ray and Ryan and the Gym Teacher Dreams podcast. Savannah and Fulton together. Now you know that's just trouble. Ain't nothing but a podcast, baby. Two broke gym teachers going crazy. Big dreams, baby. One day be like Jay-Z. We would even settle for Patrick Swayze. Welcome back to another edition of the Gym Teacher Dreams podcast. I'm Ray, here with Ryan, and uh, the end of our last episode, I told a bad decision story, and I think it sort of stimulated something in Ryan's brain, and this episode is going to be dedicated to bad decisions. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you about this restaurant down the street here, all right? I drive by on my way to your house, and it's Taco King and Chinese food. That's it's it's one building, one restaurant, and that's the sign. I love tacos. I told you it's my favorite food in the whole wide world. I cannot go there because it's it's Taco Foods and uh, Taco Taco King and Chinese food. Tell me about this this store. We had it once. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it make I like the concept. I don't like the concept. I love Mexican food. I love tacos. I like Chinese food. My family likes Chinese food, so both are good. But the fact that they're in the same building, just kind of—I'm not sure. You know, I don't know how it is made, but I just—I just like, hey, man, I want tacos, and I—I I want Chinese. Okay, we there them. we go. Let's go. Wait, I know a store, or I know you a restaurant. Walk there too. What's that? You could walk there. Yeah, I take my scooter. Scooter. And they're like Spider Man. You know. I will trust you. How's yeah. that like Spider-Man? I'm the sure. movie. He was up. Well, he was on his moped. Um, <laughs> okay. Pizza delivery boy at oh, the time. Right? That's why I don't get it. Dang yeah. it. I need to watch yeah. more movies. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of, I love Long John Silver's. Love it. Yes. I like KFC. But when they came together, I think both food, those, when they're in the same building, both foods seem worse to me. Yeah. Have KFC had- and Clinton. Yeah. I don't remember that day. Yeah, they have a new one now. Oh, do they? Yeah. But I used to just go out into town at that. And, you know, they would give us so many crunchies. Yeah. Which they don't do now at, at, at Wait, Long so Long John's. John's. Yes. Yes. The same, same thing. There's a new Long John's that's not there anymore. So I would just spoon them up. And, you know, I'm sitting, yeah. laying sideways eating the crunchies. Yeah. Yep. The beautiful, you know? Yeah. You're right, man. The, the chicken planks are way better when I was younger. Okay. I... I feel that way and I'm glad that you seem to agree so maybe some well, the point I'm trying to make is sometimes things are better when they're separated yeah I like tacos I like Chinese put them together I'm not sure I'm going to go there love Long John Silver's I like KFC put them together I, I, the food didn't taste as good I don't go back to those kind of places but speaking of Clinton and those restaurants so I mean the old Long John's was cool with like the, the rope on the, the planks mm-hmm. as you came into the building yeah that building later became Flav of Flav's House of Chicken. Did you I know, know that? Yes, I you did, did know, know that. Okay, yes. Okay. And it was there for a couple months and then it was gone. Yeah, I did know that. But yeah, and then uh, when you mentioned, did you, so K, you went to KFC in Clinton too? No? Not really. Oh, okay. But, Mr. Uh, and, Quicks. Oh yeah, my mom used to work at Mr. Quicks. Oh yeah? Yeah, and then it, she like the last couple years that Mr. Quicks was there, she worked there and uh, yeah, I loved it. I stopped there a lot. Yep. Like five burgers and a half pound of fries for like four bucks. Yep. Oh man. Like I said, I could eat. Man. Yeah. So anyway, you ready for this game? Bad, bad decisions, decisions. Bad decisions. I figure I will start. And okay. You know, again, you know, in the interest of laying all my cards out, I had told that story about the, the stick and uh-huh. hitting the, the car and all that, and I said it wasn't my first time doing that. Uh, the first time wasn't really a stick, but it was just a very similar incident with vehicles. So we were in Clinton at a... Uh, uh, bar okay and uh it was one of those bars that has live music which i love it's pig pen i think we may have mentioned the pig yeah. pen on the air before yeah um so we were there and you know we were drinking like whatever and making bad decisions and uh when our designated driver arrived and you know we were loading up the car i opened up the the passenger door a little bit too um uh with too much strength mm-hmm. opened it up with too much velocity and it opened way up and it hit the car next to us yeah and like everybody in our carpool um was laughing so drunk ray thought oh this is funny to do this oh my gosh so i did it again oh and again and again oh my gosh (laughs) and i don't know if this was a different time or if it was the same time but uh one of the guys in our carpool um 
Uh, I can't even tell that side of the story. It's just it's too mean and ruthless. I won't tell. Yeah. He was also making bad decisions. Um, so I, you know, finally decided to stop being an idiot, or maybe it was time to close the door and uh, you know go home and all that stuff. So we do. We go home, and the next morning, uh, our designated driver, whose car it was, um, he calls me. He's like, "Dude, I think someone tried to break into my car," and I'm like, <laughs> I don't, "Dude, that sucks." You know, he's like, "You gotta come check this out." Or so I go. <laughs> And his passenger seat, our passenger uh, door, passenger side door, is all mangled up. And it looked like maybe someone was trying to get in with the crowbar. But uh-huh. what really had happened is I thought damage was being done to the other car. <laughs> but it was actually bending the heck out of his door, not the other car. Did you tell him? I think I did come clean on that one. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. All right. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, I will tell this this story in a bad decision. decision excuse me. So, uh, at college, Mm -hmm. and uh, my buddies and me, we were having an adult party, you know, beverages, and um, Heather waited tables at the time, Nice. Uh, and so um, she came to pick me up, and so she said, no, you're okay, I just washed my car, and so if you need to throw up, (laughs) you know, you tell me, and I'll pull over. Right. I said, okay, okay, Uh, yeah, I'm good, so... She, uh, we take off in, 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 in Dubuque, obviously, and we're going down, uh, geez, what's that, Main Street? Uh, in Dubuque, I don't know. I uh, anyway, a lot of time. anyway, so it, it wasn't more than like three minutes in the car that I just rolled down the window and just went, just like, <gasps> out the do- out the car, and it was all over the side of her car. Now, who do you think had to clean it, of course? Yeah. I did. Good. But she had told me not to do it. She yeah. pulled over. So I guess that's a first bad, one of them bad decisions was, um, she was yeah, yeah, let's just say that didn't go over real well. All right. Um, another raving, just not smart, I guess. Uh, we, like you said, have an, an adult party at a, a friend's house, you know, maybe just a little bit before we were adults, but I'm sure we were of legal age to drink. But uh, his parents were out of town, lived in a farmhouse out in Garden Plain. I don't know if you know where that is, but... Uh, it's a suburb of Fulton, right? <laughs> oh, jeez. I didn't know that, no. Okay, no. you better get a map. I, I'm going to have to, yeah. Listen, we used to go out there and play basketball. They had like an old elementary school that was like a municipal building at this point. You know, no one went to elementary school there anymore. Um, and they had some, some hoops out there. And it was like probably half court, maybe two-thirds of a, like a regulation court, you know, hoops on each side. And they were both a little bit short. So, you know, you could dunk on it, you know, if you had any ups. So I was, you know, I didn't dunk, but other people did. Mm-hmm. But, no, it was a good time. We used to go out there and have a lot of fun doing that. But anyway, this was different, different garden playing, but different location. Um, and we were having a little fire, you know, drinking around the, the fire. And the we weren't real good at making fire with, like, sticks and stuff like that. So we used gasoline, of mm-hmm. course, right? Um, so... We had like a five gallon bucket of gasoline and we had a couple of logs soaking in them just to make it easier to start it and whatnot. And uh, I was maybe I was in charge of the fire. I mean, I, I forget the details, but I was out there and, uh, you know, lit the, the logs in the little teepee form, right? And they didn't really start up real good. So I figured I'd just dump a little of the gas from the five gallon bucket onto the fire. Well, the it, it worked. It kind of started the fire a little better, but the fire went into the five-gallon bucket also, so that the gas that was maybe like halfway, you know, filled in the five-gallon bucket started on fire, and me being stupid and young, I thought maybe that would cause an explosion or something, so I kicked over the the bucket so that the gas would spread out and, Mm -hmm. you know, flame out real quick. Well, like, the grass was green at that time, so it wasn't like, it didn't start its whole yard on fire or anything like that, but the gasoline was burning about a large portion of his yard. So then I thought, well, I got to stomp it out, right? So here I'm trying to stomp out the fire and the gas is like splashing on my own legs. And now my, my leg hairs are all like singed off up to the knee, you know? So I was freaking out and uh, the fire must have gone out by itself. And honestly, there was a, another person out there that was trying to, to help me put out the fire. But, uh, you know, it must have kind of flamed out or whatever. But the, the only negative thing was that the leg hairs on my legs were burnt out. But that really could have been bad. This is a lesson to young people. Don't That's put right. fire, you know, don't put gasoline and stuff like that. Because it really probably could have been a ton worse. 
Yeah. So that's another bad decision that Raymond Sidney Gordon Jr. made. All right. Well, I'll continue with what kind of another dis, uh, bad decision. Uh, while Heather was waiting tables and wait and came to the party late, uh, we were once again um, having a little party in college, and and uh, once again I, I had a little too much to drink, and so um, I called her and told her she had to come get me. Yeah. So she comes to get me, and I'm I'm crawling to her, and I'm and I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you for coming to get me. Listen, this. Her, this, her, she's my best friend. We like, we like, we like the same things. So this girl that was at the party, I was telling Heather, you know, my girlfriend, that this other girl and I just have so many it things. So well. Yeah, so and, much yeah, we have so much in common. Here, come over and meet her, and and that didn't go over well yeah, either. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I hear I heard an ear for that for a while too. But yeah, I remember that. Anyway, so yeah, I had a similar story to that, just borderline. Uh, so my sister, uh, when she got married, uh, hey, Buck's Barn, you know that place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, her reception was out there, and uh, I, it must have been hitting it pretty hard or whatever. And, you know, I mean, I went to college quite a ways away from where I grew up. And then, you know, my first job and my first living on my own, again, was quite a ways away from my hometown. So it's like I didn't see a lot of the people after graduating high school, just very honestly. So I'm back home for this wedding, and, uh, you know, a gal that I was good friends with and had a lot in common with in high school and growing up, um, uh, she was at my sister's wedding and at the, the reception. And so I hadn't seen her in forever, and, we, you know, no, nothing sexual. We were just good friends, and I was very happy to see her. So here's drunk as SHIT Ray. I'm married at this time with one kid. Jonathan was young at that time. And, uh, you know, like if I were, if you and I were like poop faced, right. And mm -hmm. we're at a bar, you know, wedding reception, all that stuff, you know, maybe our arms around each other cause we're so drunk and yeah. had a good time of taking shots. Well, it was that, but you know, this was a, a female friend, not a male friend. My wife had never seen her before. So now Brianne comes to the bar probably looking for me cause you know, I should have been mingling with my you know, family and you know, whatnot, but I was kind of at the bar by, by myself and you know, with some friends and people I hadn't seen for a while, um, she was none too pleased that I'm like <laughs> hanging all over this girl that she's never seen before. But like I said, it wasn't anything with, you know, love or, right, lust or right. nothing sexual. Um, but I can imagine what it looked like from her eyes. And I was really drunk that evening too. But, uh, yeah. Well, here's a non-drinking, uh, bad decision. Yeah, we should probably tell a couple of those. Is, uh, you know, my freshman year at the U, we took a basketball trip to, you know, uh, Mexico, mm -hmm. and I know you've heard some stories. I have. And Casper, right? Yeah, no, this that was in my honeymoon. Oh, but was that Mexico? Yeah. Okay. So we were we played in Mexico City, and you know that's that's a little different story as it goes. But then we got uh, to just do you know just enjoy the the beach and stuff at Acapulco. Well, that one I guess that first day because I think we were only there for two days, three nights, or something like to that effect, mm -hmm. and. I, I just hung in an inner tube. So I just laid an inner tube all day. Yeah. No, this was, no, we had been there. So we must have been there three days. Anyway, so, but I, you know, I put lotion on, but I just didn't reapply. So I'm in this tube all day. And you need SPF like 400. Yeah, feet. yeah. You've talked about my pasty white, yeah. white skin. Your double okay. digits aren't going to cut it. Yeah, so we we get back and, and I realize that I made a mistake. I mean, think about it. I didn't, you know, I didn't roll over or anything. I just sat in the tube <laughs> all day, you know, riding the Man. waves. And so by the time I got back, I mean I was sick. I, I, I was someone has pictures of I was sun sick. And so that yeah. that last night we we were out. I didn't get to go out because I just couldn't go. I just yeah. I felt so bad. Um, so that was a bad decision. But what it made it worse was when I got back. Obviously, you know you peel. You know first I you sunburn, it hurts, yeah, and yeah. then you peel, yeah. and it itched so bad. Yeah. And I was practicing, oh, and I had one go to a doctor because I needed something to stop the itching. Mm -hmm. But two, someone came down on my shoulder during the sunburn and ripped it like raw, oh. and so that hurt too. Yeah. So you would think that I would always use sunscreen and, and not do that. But that was a bad decision to sit in an inner tube all all day oh, yeah, in Mexico sure. yeah. with my pasty white skin. I would imagine. Yeah. I got another one here uh, before I forget about it. Is uh, I made a bad decision in first grade. Hmm. Uh, me and my buddy, um, I don't know. These girls were trying to pick us up, you know, in first grade, 
and we went out to recess for them with them and played mm-hmm. one day. And they, we were way out in the field. I don't know what oh, we were boy. playing. Anyway, these um, twins. Can, I, can we pause for a second? Yeah. Do you guys have recess at South Prairie? Yes. Do, I mean, how far can the kids go? I don't know, but um, you know, we could go ways in my school. I know this is different. Oh, it's oh. a different time, different era. But um, South Prairie, they 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 don't let them go. Like depending on the uh, place, but no, they can't go very far. Yeah, so I mean, it's a little different. Yeah, I, so I, yeah, I we went. W- yeah, full elementary, you could spread out quite a bit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so so ahead. we were out there playing with these tw- these twins, and uh, you know, it's twins. the whistle whistle blows, and and. Uh, the twins somehow get on top of us. Whoa. And they would not let us go. And I don't break rules. I didn't break rules. In first grade, I don't break rules not very often. I need to go. So, and they, yeah. So they would not let us get up. And so I was late for recess. Got yelled at by my teacher. Mm-hmm. Not only because I was late, but making bad choices of being with friends. Because these, these two twins were, were trouble even back then. Yeah. And these two twins were actually an episode on Jerry Springer. Nah. Yeah. Come on. I'm not kidding you. I can't wait to and I can't quite remember the episode, but it had to pertain to Jerry Springer stuff. Sure. So, yeah, bad decision in first grade. Awesome. Yeah. Now, when you went home and told Mike, hey, Dad, this is what, this is what I got in trouble for. Was he like, high five? Like, no. No? No. Dang. No. I mean, I don't even know if they knew. I mean, I, they probably did. But I had to write it in my in a book or journal. something. Yeah. 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 All right, so I'm trying to think of bad decisions that I made when I was sober, but I think, and I'm struggling. Uh, so I think the moral of this story, if you don't mind me saying, is don't drink, okay? Because alcohol makes you make bad decisions. Now I'm sure I've made bad decisions uh, when you know in, in school, like you, like you're talking about, but I'm just struggling to uh, to to think of them, I guess. Okay, maybe another public service announcement about, you know, I don't know how you feel about, like, sleepovers and stuff like that. I know you love them yourself, mm-hmm. personally, you know. Uh, but uh, I was sleeping over at a buddy's house, and, uh, you know, a gal about her same age lived, like, just down the street or whatever. So we had this plan that we were going to sneak out in the middle of the night and mm-hmm. go see her or whatever. And I don't know. I don't remember what age we were but let's just say like fifth grade it was probably somewhere around there and uh so we we crawl out his bedroom window and we walk over to her house i think we made it to like her yard and then we decided it was stupid and probably a bad idea um so we were walking back and we didn't really plan a way to get back into his bedroom (laughs) so you know we're like fifth grade i don't know how tall we were or whatever but the window was about as tall as us and we had no way you know maybe one of us could have pushed the other one up you know Mm -hmm. but someone was going to be left out there but apparently we were making enough commotion trying to get back in that we woke his mom and she came out and you know she was a little disappointed in us and and whatnot and uh, if you knew you know the family and the mom i was sort of uh, disappointed to have disappointed her more than the action itself and more than the trouble itself. But, uh, yeah, that was funny. I, I don't know, it was a mess. I think now that I remember, I think I lifted him in and he was getting a folding chair to send out to me. And that's his mom kind of heard that and caught us doing that. But whatever. Okay. Bad decision. Bad decision. Sneaking out at night. My buddy... We kind of snuck out quite a bit. Did you? I would have never guessed. Yeah, that. but it's, we didn't do a whole lot. You know, we'd yeah. we'd you know run around and just be, think we're cool and yeah. just because we could. Yeah. How about that? Um, but anyway, so one night we were out and we were throwing rocks at at a light. Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden, we see police kind of roll up, mm-hmm. and uh, this policeman ended up being. My future wife, yeah, yes, um, yeah, stepdad was yeah. a police officer. He's like, yeah, someone said, called and said that police, uh, kids were throwing rocks at the light, and we're like, no, we were just pretending, just warming up our arms, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But that was probably not a great decision at the time to uh, throw rocks at a, or a light. Time. Yeah, true. See, and this is why I need you to tell stories first, is because you kind of remember you you pull memories out of my brain with your story. So we weren't sneaking out this particular night, but you know we're staying out, and I think the, the street lights were on at this point. But um, 
we're in middle school, and this is you know s- stupid people doing stupid things, I guess. But uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine, we weren't, we weren't even really good friends, but uh, he was sort of a Weisenheimer. He's you know like one of those funny kids to hang around with, but he like always got in trouble. Probably mm-hmm. like the twins you were talking about, you know. He, he ended up on Jerry Springer, but uh, he did this thing like him and some of his buddies where they would tie fishing string to like like a like a teddy bear or whatever, and then. Um, what we were doing, apparently he did this often, but I was with him just this one time, and you would drag the animal, like pull it across the road as cars were coming, and they would think it was like an animal, like a raccoon. Oh my gosh. Slam on the brakes or whatever. Yeah, it could have been horrible, but no one was harmed in, in this. Or you would sort of hang it over like a, like a telephone uh, wire or whatever, you know, and uh-huh. you know, either pull it up or drop it down or whatever, like different things like that. And, you know, still thinking back to that, like I, Part of me still think it was pretty funny, you know, <laughs> only yeah. because no one was, was harmed. But uh, yeah, that was a stupid decision that that we did. We were being you know stupid young kids, but you know we had a teddy bear that was like dark in color and the, the fishing cord and just pulling that thing across the road. And people think it's like a an animal running in front of the car. And That's terrible. It's terrible. Jeez, <laughs> you guys in Fulton were bad. Uh-huh. So we were out in Nebraska and we went to a family they had made their own pond yeah and they had all kinds of fun stuff to do and so they had a uh zip line zip line yeah so i decided to go down the zip line and but i didn't make sure that the rope that you used to pull it back up Mm -hmm. was clear of i don't know what that means because i've never done zip line okay so what you have is you have your zip line and then so that you can get it back there's a long rope that you just pull and take the zip line back to the back up all right Yeah. yeah So I didn't really check it, and so I go down, and as I get down, that rope got caught on whatever it got caught. I think the 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 ledge that we came from. Okay. So as I get down to the water, water it's starting to wrap around my neck. Oh no! Now if I had a little, if I was a little farther, we had to go a little farther. Whatever case it be, this thing gets around my neck. You you could have been done. Yeah, done, done. Yeah. So it ended up, it squeezed. It left a little mark, but it didn't. But it didn't, you know, pop my head off or right. anything. But that was a bad decision oh, not to check that rope to make sure yeah. that it was uh, clear of all obstacles. Holy but God. yeah, I was scared as going down. It was one of those like, oh my gosh, I'm dying, yeah. type of thing. So, uh, were you ever very good with like rope swings and stuff like that? Nope. So, um, and then like monkey bars. Nope. Okay, yeah, my lower body was a little heavier than my upper body strength, right? So I was never good at those types yeah. of things. Yeah. Also. So there was a, a buddy of mine who, you know, lived at this house, like, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere. They had a, a barn, um, and they had a rope swing out in that barn, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the things that our friends and, you know, our, the, the people that would go there would do is this rope swing from one rafter to the other, right? From one side of the barn would swing right. to the other. Right, yeah. Well, I knew I was a little too heavy and not strong enough to, to do it, but everyone's doing it, Right. And this is the kind of kid I was, and I, I'm glad I grew out of it. But, you know, like, my friend's younger brother was about to go, and uh, as he went, I kind of gave him a little push, you know, and he didn't like that, right, you know? Right. I mean, because he could have got hurt, very honestly, but I think all that ended up happening was I gave him a little more velocity and whatever. So then I decided I'm going to do it because everyone else is doing it, right? Well, he gets a little payback, gives me a little push. And I don't know how high this thing up, or how high up this thing was. We're talking probably 20, 30 foot anyway, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I couldn't hang on, right? But I wasn't going to let go because I was going to fall down and break something. Right, right, right. yeah. So I held on to that rope hmm. all 20 feet down or 30 or whatever. It was, oh, jeez. Just ripped and burned the H out of my hand. Yeah. You know? And you know how I do the hand shaky thing when I get excited? Yeah. Well, I wasn't doing the hand shaky thing, but the, my buddies made fun of me. I was like blowing on my hand. I was like, I was pulling them down or something. And uh, yeah, that was bad news i ended up having blisters on my hand and rope burns for for quite some time but yeah bad decision and then there's uh, another one probably the last story i got time for and uh um i was okay so out of high school i went to western Illinois university right and it didn't go super well um i roomed with a um you know kind of a wild friend from uh, Fulton, right, and uh, all his fault, but we made bad decisions, and we didn't make it very long there, 
Actually, I, I mean, maybe a side story to that, but maybe it'll be a, another time. Um, but, uh, eh, heck, why not? I'll just tell it. Uh, so he was kind of, I mean, he was a good kid. He was a fun kid. He was wild, whatever. But uh, he was kind of straight-laced all through, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, let's, I'm not going to lie. You know, I did, I mean, maybe I did a little bit of underage drinking and stuff. Maybe I made some bad decisions or whatever. But I think... Big picture, I was a good kid. I just made some bad decisions, right? I, mm-hmm. My mom would probably agree with that. But uh, um, so our senior year of football, which ended at Sterling Newman, Sterling High School, because you know Newman right. played on high school, field, yeah, it ended there. I think we were still in the locker room, and this kid who was kind of straight laced, you know, never did bad things that way, you know. Uh, he, he says, I, I forget exactly what he said, but the gist of his story was, I'm going to start partying. I want you to show me how. And I'm thinking to myself, me? Like, that made me feel bad. It's like, why? Here's a dude that wants to, like, be reckless and party, and he's looking to me. Right, right. I'm like, how bad am I? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, so we did, and uh, he's the kid that I ended up rooming with at Western. And so the the student, you know, kind of overtook the teacher, and he became wild. You know, I know there was one time where, you know, he went out and was maybe boozing a little bit through the evening and maybe showed up at school that way or whatever. And uh, so a, a similar story. So uh, at Western, we both ended up dropping out before our first full year was done. And um, we're back home and I have a job. I'm working at Eagle in Clinton there, the country market or whatever it was called. Country, whatever, you know. Right. Jewel, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's in Lyons, if you're familiar with Clinton. Did you ever head yes. towards Eagle Point and all that? Yes. Yeah. So the Eagle used to be there. Now it's a gas station. So I'm working there, and it's the winter time. And uh, when I get off work, it's like the evening hours. It's like nine, ten at night or whatever. It's dark, right? You know. And uh, I see, you know, you know, plows had come through and cleared the um, parking lot and the roads because it was, you know, it snowed. And there's, you know, uh, because there was accumulation of snow over the last days or weeks or whatever. You know, there's these snow banks everywhere. But I see there's like tire tracks. That like go through one of the like little snow banks, you know, one of the piles of snow from the the cleared road and the cleared uh, parking lot, and I see that the the tire tracks kind of go like right to, towards my car, and I'm like, what in the heck? You know, I'm kind of putting this all together. So as I get closer to my car, the car right next to my car is my buddy. You know, I, I'll give his name. His name's Andy. Okay, my buddy Andy, right? <laughs> and uh, he so he's parked right next to me, and I go towards my car, and he's like, dude, hop in. And, you know, he, whatever, persuasive, I guess. And it didn't take much, you know, twisting of my arm. So I hop in his car and, uh, you know, we start driving around doing fishtails like, you know, kids would do in snowy conditions or whatever. And Of course. Yeah, one of the things we did, which, again, could have been real bad and, you know, we probably got, could have gotten in trouble if, you know, law enforcement was near. I hope, I hope police lady isn't listening. But we were driving down, like, one of the main roads in Clinton there, you know, kind of where, like, uh, it used to be J.C. Penney. It's Circle Bar Refrigeration now. Do you kind of happy Joe's I, area? Yeah, I right? think so. Yeah. Um, so we're driving on that road, and he just pulls the parking brake. Oh right? my gosh! Yeah. So we just start doing like donuts, and then, you know, on a relatively busy road, but because it had been snowy, no one was really on the road. It couldn't have been bad. So then, you know, we're driving just on back roads or whatever, and uh, we see a snowman, and he, you know, puts on the brake, and he's like. Go mess that up, or whatever he said. He, you know, he didn't talk as clean as I did, but uh, he's like, blank that up. And I look at him, and I look at the snowman, I'm like, okay. So I open the door, and I go run, and I'm going to form tackle this thing, right? Well, I swear, in addition to the snow, it must have got a little drizzle, and it was freezing conditions. So this thing was like a block of ice. You know? <laughs> Boom, with my right shoulder, oh, I can almost still feel it. And like, I slide down the snowman, which didn't move at all. So, uh, because I didn't, you know, mess it up, he then gets out and he goes running after it. And I swear, I must have, like, broken the, the, the ice at the foundation. Of course. Because, yeah, when he went into it, he knocked yeah. it over. But I did all the legwork for him. But I, I remember because, you know, I, was, I wasn't, like, knocked out or anything like that. <laughs> but I was feeling it, right? Yeah. You know, I was a little sore. And as he's approaching the snowman, I remember sort of mumbling, it's frozen or something like that. <laughs> But then he takes it out, and he thought he was, you know, pretty special. But I, I said, dude, I did all the work. You know, I knocked it off of its frozen base. You just had to clean it up for me. But, again, bad decisions. You know, I don't, I'm not promoting 
driving in those conditions or driving like that in those conditions or hopping in a vehicle with a reckless friend in those conditions. You know, and I know some of these stories talked about, you know, booze and whatnot. I'm not saying do that. I made bad decisions. I don't want anybody to make the bad decisions that I made when I was younger. So yeah. I share these only from a place of love. Don't do what I did. Yeah, and I'm going to tell one more because about that. Yeah. Uh, my sister's like this one at my at Brian's uh, graduation party. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had made uh, little jungle juice. Oh, so college graduation. Her college graduation, okay, yes. Good. And you know, I'm five years older than her, so uh, you know. And did I have a kid yet? It had been close. Okay. Uh, I don't know. That's a long time. I don't yeah. think so. But anyway. Mm-hmm. I had a little too much jungle juice. Yeah. Because, you know, that's like Kool-Aid. Yeah. And so I, you know. You like that. Like the combat yeah. juice too, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm a little intoxicated, but was it enough? So then I got, I grabbed the tequila bottle. And I was taking shots shot, of it shot, from the shot, bottle, shot, just shot. running around asking people, you want te- I got tequila? You want some? <laughs> and uh, you know, there's my stomach issues. Well, oh, yeah. it got to the point. It was at my parents' house, of course. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I had... I, I had to, um, you know, throw up. Yeah, um, stuff. a lot. Yeah, and a lot, and I was so then I was hugging the toilet. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and my mom were very concerned that they would need to get my yeah, stomach that, pumped. That yeah, that yeah, and and yeah, I I only have three, four, four or five drinking stories, and I've told three of them. Yeah, but yeah, that was a bad one. I I oh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, but it it uh, it didn't end out what end did the very next well. Uh, I don't remember, so probably not. Not good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I hate that feeling. Hey, we got a guest that came into the studio. Hey, hey. I was just telling a story about the jungle juice at the graduation party. Anything to say about that? Oh, no. No. (laughs) All right. Well, right. That was our, uh, our first episode on Bad Decisions. Maybe if we have more, we will... Have more to tell, but I uh, hope you enjoy the stories. I don't think they were too crazy, and I'm sure many of you uh, have had uh, similar as you yeah. made bad decisions when you were youths or uh, adults. So thank you for listening, and tell a friend, and we'll see you. Ray? Bye. Goodbye, baby. We'll see you. Time